everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. Now in today's video, I'll be going through five more of some of the largest freshwater fish in the world. And as I have to say in all of these videos, this is just one in a series. And I've already been through 30 freshwater fish that are thought to be some of the largest in the world. And the first fish is one of my favourite freshwater fish, and to find it we'll be heading down under, as we have the Australian lungfish. Now the Australian lungfish is endemic to Australia, and is normally found in pools, swamps, and other sluggish waters. Now this fish is the only surviving member of its family, but is also one of six lungfish still alive today. And lungfish are lobed finned fishes, and these are some of the most primitive fish in the world, and fossils of this group date back 380 million years ago to the Devonian period. And to survive on earth this long, lungfish have some very special adaptations, as some African lungfish species can live months or even sometimes years out of water. And to do this they dig a hole underground, where they wrap themselves in a cocoon and hibernate until the water returns. But unlike the other species of lungfish, the Australian lungfish doesn't do as well out of water, as although the Australian lungfish can live several days without water, it needs to be kept moist and will not survive if it completely dries out. And in the slower moving waters in which it's found, it normally feeds on other aquatic creatures such as frogs, tadpoles, small fishes, snails, shrimps and earthworms. But they are also known to eat plant material every now and again. And this prehistoric fish lives to around 20 to 25 years old. But there was a specimen at the Shed Aquarium, affectionately known as Grandad, who lived to over 80 years old. But unfortunately he was finally euthanized on the 5th of February 2017. But in the wild this fish can reach some impressive sizes, as they're thought to reach a maximum length of around 1.6 meters or around 5.2 feet. And at this size they weigh around 45 kilograms or around 100 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a baby hippo or mid-sized rottweiler. So this fish may not be the largest that I've ever featured, but it probably is the most primitive. And I did go into a little more detail on this species on a video that I've already done on all the lungfish species. But we'll move from one primitive species to another as we have the gulf sturgeon. Now as I've covered before in this series, I wouldn't call most species of sturgeon true freshwater fish, but they do spend a lot of their time in freshwater, so I guess they deserve a place in this list. Now as you can probably guess from its name, the gulf sturgeon can be found in the brackish and marine waters of the Gulf of Mexico, but they are known to move into freshwater rivers between February and April every year, as like with many other sturgeon species, they breed in freshwater and spend the rest of their time in brackish and salt waters. And the gulf sturgeon is almost identical to the Atlantic sturgeon, and for a long time they are thought to be the same species. That was until 1955, where they are officially recognised as a separate subspecies. And this sturgeon lives a very split life, depending on if it's living in salt or fresh water, as they're thought to primarily feed or even possibly only feed in the winter, and this is when they're in the marine or brackish waters. So like with many people, they put on a lot of weight in the winter and lose it all in the summer. But when they're in the marine waters, they feed on a variety of foods, such as mollusks, shrimp, marine worms, isopods and small fish. And the gulf sturgeon has an interesting party piece, as they're known to jump up to 8 feet out of the water before crashing back down into the river. And this loud crashing sound is thought to be a group signal to let other sturgeons know that they're in the area. But like many other large sturgeon species, they are threatened in the wild, as they are often preyed upon by alligators and sharks. And like with other sturgeons are covered in this list, people do tend to poach them for their valuable caviar. But if this wasn't enough, pollution and damming have contributed to the deep decline in their numbers. But because of this, any caught sturgeon must be released by law, and their ongoing breeding projects and studies to help us understand this species more and help it to bounce back. But if given the chance to reach maturity, they can reach a maximum length of around 2.4 meters or 8 feet long. And at this size they weigh around 90 kilograms or 200 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a spotted seal or a mountain goat. And even though that's a very impressive size, it's not the largest sturgeon that I've featured in this series. But for our next species, we'll be heading over to New Zealand as we have the long thin eel. Now this species of eel is endemic to New Zealand and are normally found in most freshwater rivers. And long thin eels have a very strange life cycle, as New Zealand long thin eels breed only once at the end of their life, making a journey thousands of kilometers from New Zealand to their spawning grounds near Tonga. Once these eels have mated, they soon pass away. Their fertilized eggs float to the surface and hatch into very flat leaf-like larvae. After this, they helplessly drift on large oceanic currents all the way back to New Zealand, and this long trip is known to take up to 15 months. After they've reached New Zealand, they mature into glass eels, and these resemble small transparent adult eels. And after spending a year in estuaries, they finally make the long journey upstream into fresh water. But once they're fully mature and feel at home in their freshwater habitats, they're known to be opportunistic feeders, as when they're small they feed on insect larvae, but larger mature eels feed heavily on fish, such as trout and the New Zealand native galaxids. But as they can grow quite large, as even reported 
reports of these eels eating waterfowl. But although this species isn't critically endangered, its numbers are declining, and there are many reasons for this, as their unique life cycle makes them very vulnerable to extinction, as New Zealand longfin eels have the slowest growth rate of any other eel species, growing on average 1 to 2 centimetres a year. But as you've seen in some of these clips and images, they do grow quite large, so if you see a very large longfin eel, they're almost certainly very old. But as I covered previously, they only breed once at the end of their life cycle, so this slow growth rate and slow reproductive rate makes them very vulnerable. But in the longfin eel world, females get much larger than males, as females are thought to reach a size of around 2 metres or 6.5 feet. And at this size, they weigh around 40 kilograms, or around 88 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a tufted deer or two American beavers. And I think that's a very respectable size for a freshwater eel. But for our next species, we'll be heading to all tropical and temperate oceans, and quite worryingly freshwater rivers, as we have the bull shark. Now, I have covered the bull shark quite recently in another video, so I'll try not to repeat myself too much. But as I'm sure a lot of you know, bull sharks can live in salt water and fresh water, as they're commonly known to travel up large rivers, which can be quite worrying if you're taking a swim. But bull sharks don't venture into freshwater every now and again, as it's very frequent in some populations, and they're thought to be able to live for up to four years in full fresh water, as bull sharks have been known to travel up the Mississippi, the Amazon, and the Zambezi River to name a few, and there's also a healthy population in Lake Nicaragua. And one individual of this species was spotted 2,500 miles up the Amazon River, where you really wouldn't expect to find a shark. But the reasons why the bull sharks do this is a heavily debated topic, but one of the main reasons seems to be safety, as female bull sharks often give birth to their pups in fresh water, as it's a lot safer than the oceans, as they'll be able to avoid other sharks and large predatory fish. But adult bull sharks are apex predators, mainly feeding on bony fish and smaller sharks, but they're also known to be opportunistic feeders, feeding on things such as birds, crustaceans, dolphins, terrestrial mammals and turtles. And when it comes to bite force, the bull shark is among the highest of any fish, as they can bite with a force of around 6,000 newtons, which is more powerful than the 12 other sharks measured, including the great white shark and the great hammerhead. But as I mentioned in the other video that I featured bull sharks, only the tiger shark and the great white are responsible for more attacks on humans. But as I also covered in that video, you really shouldn't be scared of them, as there are many things that you do in your day-to-day -day life that are more likely to kill you than the shark, such as mowing the lawn or popping a champagne cork. And every single year, 100 million sharks are killed by humans, so we are the real villains. But large females are thought to reach a maximum size of around 3.3 meters, or around 11 feet. And at this size, they're thought to reach a maximum weight of around 227 kilograms, or around 500 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as an okapi or a pygmy hippopotamus. So again, I wouldn't call it a true freshwater fish, but it's probably one of the scariest things to come across in a river. But for our final species, we'll be moving down to South America, as we have the tiger shovelnose catfish. Now, this species is quite popular in the aquarium trade, but it's native to the Amazon and Rio Orinoco basins in Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela, French Guiana, Brazil, and Peru. And this fish is rather peculiar common name is both because of its interesting markings and its shovel-shaped head. And this shovel-shaped head helps it feed on its prey, which is normally fish, as it's mostly piscivorous, but it's also known to eat aquatic worms and crustaceans. And it shares the Amazon's waters with a few other large catfish species. And one of these species, the red-tailed catfish, is even able to breed with the shovel-nosed catfish. But this does not tend to happen in the wild, but it's normally done in captivity, and the hybrid looks a little something like this. But even though it doesn't get anywhere near the size of the piraiba, still reaches a very respectable 1.3 meters, or around 4.3 feet. And at this size, they're thought to weigh around 75 kilograms, or around 165 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as an orangutan, or a dharma gazelle. But even though it's the smallest on this list, it's not bad for a shovel-faced fish. But that's about it for this video. If you have any other suggestions for large fish to feature in these videos, leave them down in the comments below, and I'll try and get round to them. But thank you for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. And until next time, goodbye.